Have you ever felt that you've had a life before this one? Perhaps you recall moments that feel like deja vu, but from a dream or a distant past. Are you on the search of your soul's purpose and mission here on earth? Are you looking for deeper meaning and an understanding of your core being? Well, the Akashic Records can help you understand your soul and your previous lifetimes. This learning can aid you by healing the past and by clearing past issues. You therefore can improve your ability to create the best possible future. It's the cosmic data bank where the truth of all that ever was, is and will be stored. It is basically all the things that ever happened to a person or to a soul. So whatever was part of your journey, whatever you've experienced, all of your impressions, everything is stored there and is that field of information. If you're looking for deeper meaning of your soul's journey and where you have come from in previous lifetimes, then tune in to today's episode. Welcome back, Soul Tribe, to the Divine Feminines podcast and today's episode on the Akashic Records. In series two, you may have recalled the episode on Twin Flames discussed with the incredible Dr. Amelia Caddy. Well, I'm pleased to invite Amelia here again for an episode exploring the topic of the Akashic Records. I couldn't think of anyone better than Amelia because I was so privileged enough to have my own Akashic Records explored by Amelia back in 2020 last year. And at the time, I felt curious to have a deeper understanding of my soul. It felt like the right timing, having achieved some major transformational changes on my journey and being in a more positive place of growth with added wisdom. I really wanted to go deeper and I really wanted to understand my soul. Why am I here? What's my purpose? What else could I work on? So Amelia assisted me. And for those that don't know of the lovely Amelia, she's an intuitive tarot reader who receives guidance through clairaudience clairvoyance, clairsentience, and claircognizance. Several years ago, she transitioned from academia into reading tarot full-time and became reading and channeling messages for the collective on YouTube, as well as working on a one-to-one basis with clients. Her focus is always on self-empowerment. You can find Amelia at Amelia's Tarot PhD on YouTube, as well as at AC underscore tarot on Twitter and through her website, theameliacaddy.com. So with that being said, Welcome back, Amelia. It's so lovely to have you here with us again. Thank you. Hi, Steph. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for having me back. Hello to everyone listening. Yeah, thank you. And I know we've made it. We've made it through Mercury Retrograde. Oh, my goodness. Yes, thank goodness. (laughs) (laughs) I have not enjoyed it this time, I have to say. I think it's kicked everyone's butt in some way or the other, Mm, honestly. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better. (laughs) I think it kicked my butt, not so much on the podcast front of recording episodes. There might have been a few rescheduling things, but I didn't, I felt it just kicked my butt in other ways. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just couldn't really explain it. And then afterwards I was like, oh my goodness, we've just finished Mercury Retrograde. Oh, my butt stopped being kicked. That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm really excited to talk about this episode. And actually, it's quite interesting how divine alignment works, because I was thinking about doing this episode in the series four to come. And Mm -hmm. it so happened that things were shifting. And I said to myself, do you know what? I think the Akashic Records might need to come into series three. And then I sat there with it and I sort of just just felt the energy of it. And I looked at all the other topics and there's another topic that we've covered called soul goals. Mm -hmm. And I just think that this is such a great sort of deeper sort of area to talk about that connects with, you know, developing goals for your soul. So yeah, it just, I think it just worked out really well. So. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I'm really excited to talk about it. And I think for maybe some of the listeners, they might be like Akashic Records. What is this? Is Mm -hmm. it some kind of hidden um, cave that has all these files on me? um, (laughs) Criminal records. So I think you're the best person to really describe what are the Akashic Records. Okay. Um, Yeah, I mean, they are, in a sense, you could think of it like a cave or like a library. It's... um, It's where everything, basically everything ever is stored. So every 
action you've ever taken that you're taking in the present moment or that you might take every thought that you've ever had is stored in the Akashic records. And that's the same for everybody around you. And I know some people even extend it to everything as well, even, you know, the life journey of inanimate objects. So even your car or your home might have its own Akashic record. So everything is stored there. And if you've ever thought to yourself, um, okay, I have two options. What would happen if I do this? What would happen if I do that? The Akashic records can help you to see what each of those choices might look like and what might unfold fold after. So if you think about the concept of, um, you know, multiple universes, that anything you can imagine is existing elsewhere, you can see all those possibilities in the records. We can also find things about our, our soul, our soul's um, origin, maybe if we're a star seed or star traveler, where we where we came from, you know, we can find all of that in the Akashic records as well. So basically it's a huge database of everything that's happened and everything that's yet to happen as well. Wow. That just sounds like it's bigger than the world in its sense. I know. Yeah. It's kind of mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. And I guess, okay. So that makes sense, but how do you like, where does the information come from? How do you, cause I'm trying to visualize it and I've got this big visualization of this expansive sort of library like yeah all encompassing library but where where does this information exist how do you tap into those records yeah that's a really good question because it's something I asked myself when I started finding out about this like I, I wouldn't say I was skeptical but I was grasping to understand well who decided this how do we know this you know um where is this place so there are um, most of this information has come about through people who've channeled these these messages or and bits of information that over time, you know, information about the Akashic records has grown. And, you know, as intuitives gather more information, they add to this body of knowledge. But the Akashic records, most of it. I mean, how I feel about them is that this information is stored in the higher realm. So we always, you know, we hear a lot about the fifth dimension um, with the archangels. And I feel that that's kind of where that information comes from that we're channeling because the fourth dimension is more maybe spirits and souls who have been incarnated and are in a period of transition. So it's less of a stable dimension. The fifth dimension and above is where we get the information that's more fixed and isn't so much affected by what's going on here in the 3D. So it's the information that um, is is less changing, if that makes sense. Um, And it's also of a higher vibration as well. So yeah, I mean, so the Akashic Records, um, there's still so much I feel that we don't know. And I think it's that, um, you know, we're going to continue to add to what we know and find out more detail. I mean, there are certain soul groups that we know hardly anything about because of how rare they are in terms of incarnating here um, on earth. So yeah, the information, it comes from, from people who've channeled. It also comes from us because as I said, everything that we're thinking and doing is adding to the these records so we're actually always depositing um bits and pieces into the records as we go wow that that's really fascinating so basically it's a collective database let's Mm -hmm. say bank of all this intuitive insight wisdom and knowledge that's being um accumulated over time and so I guess from your perspective you you are able to gain this insight through your own intuitive abilities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel that everybody has the ability, you know, to tap into their own personal Akashic records um, because although it's sort of a huge big database of everything, we've, we've obviously got our own personal record in there. Um, But the way that I came to this is I actually, I worked for a while as um, uh, an assistant for Anna Sayers. I don't know if anyone who's listening has heard of her. She's an intuitive. She's on, you know, you can find her website online and um, while I was working for her, I worked through some of the courses that she had on offer. And one of them was teaching teaching um, clients how to read the Akashic Records. So that was my way in through almost kind of this structured, um, quite rigorous training. So that formed my initial idea of the Akashic Records and the information. And as I 
I sort of opened this door and worked with my Akashic record guides. I started receiving my own downloads, which helped me to sort of move through in my own way and, and add bits and pieces of information here and there. So, um, that was my way in. I suppose it was quite, you know, almost like taking um, a course or something at, at a college. Um, whereas for other people, it's it's much more of an intuitive path in. So yeah, for me, it was an actual course that I took. Wow, that's really interesting. But then you've mm. obviously taken the course itself gave structure, but then you were yeah. able to develop something that really aligned with your own intuitive skills and ability yeah yeah and I think that's kind of that's that's really um important and interesting because that's kind of how we're going to increase what we know and add to the existing um information out there so what I would say you know if you're thinking if you're listening and you're thinking of of tapping into your Akashic records you know I would say go for it please don't feel that you know it's for someone who maybe has training to do only or that you have to have a particular kind of way into the Akashic records I think everything really that we can bring to light is interesting and helpful in this area cool yeah so that sounds really good I you know I think that either in my situation obviously you did it on my behalf Mm -hmm. I have to say it's so funny Amelia so you did it last year 2020 in June okay yeah when I read it I was like wow this is a lot right and there was Mm. a lot and I I was fascinated by a lot of it I mean the whole of it and then I went back and and it's so interesting there's so much resonated then but then now a year later I was like whoa (laughs) It, it resonated even more. And I, oh, kind of, wow. Yeah. So I had to read it again. I, I was reading it again purposefully for yeah. this episode because I wanted, mm. you know, I wanted to open up a bit with the Soul Tribe and also just give them a bit of insight about what I found and how I found it really relevant. And there were some areas in it, you know. Um, so I'll, I'll just, I'll give one example because I know I'm going to okay. get into my own reading, but there was one example that said that my archangel for my archangel archangelic training I was support Mm. one of my archangels was archangel Gabriel Mm. now at the time last year I was like whoa because my great-grandfather is called Gabriel okay Um, and I never met him but I always knew a lot about him and um he traveled quite a lot I know and that's you know a lot to do with like my family's cultural makeup as well Mm -hmm. and so that really I was like wow isn't that cool but then when I um, when I read it again today and I and I read some about something about, you know, the those that are under his training, they're called Gabrielites and they have a need to speak and be heard. Mm hmm. And this was last year, June, the podcast hadn't come out, right? <laughs> and obviously the podcast had been on my on my radar for several years. But yeah. Penny didn't drop last year when I read it. And then I also did, um, on a separate note, and this is why I want to say this for the listeners, on a separate note, I had some, you know, um, my, my coach, quantum physics coach and she's also does astrology in, in some forms she was looking at my solar revolution meaning my year ahead for my birthday right my solar mm-hmm. return and what came through in the energy was strong mercurial energy the throat chakra mm. speaking my truth and my wisdom and sharing my experiences and doing it with a group that would be like-minded and would be valuing that that type of um insight and information <laughs> wow <I'm> like, what? <laughs> that's okay. amazing yeah and so I was like I had to say it to you today because I when yeah. I, was reading it yesterday, I was like no way like you would have never have known that she you know no. she's she's a different person as well giving me guidance and the two just aligned so like magnificently really oh wow you know? and and I can't and I'm I'm grateful because right now we're on we're like mid-year and um the full moon of Capricorns just happened. And they were saying, look at when the new moon was and look at the last six months. And I can turn around and say, wow, in these last six months, I launched the podcast and it's all the way into this third series. I'm here with you, Amelia. Like I cannot, I'm very grateful for this. I'm grateful for you. And it just, and I'm, I'm really feeling that in my soul because it's part of my soul's mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I think this is why, why I really feel strongly about this episode and this topic, because I know that it's not easy to know mm-hmm. why we're here, what we're meant mm-hmm. Because like we've said before, right, it, it gets quite busy out there and there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of other distractions and um, just narratives. And it's easy to not really understand who we are and find our own authentic self. Yeah. 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 And I think that's that's one of the lovely things with the Akashic Records is if you have a look into um, your archangelic realm of training or, you know, the energy you're bringing with you. So that that kind of means we have we have. So we know most of us know about our seven main or major chakras and there's an archangelic realm that corresponds with with each of those. So we can find out which our soul is most comfortable, most confident with. So, you know, like you, you, you have this amazing ability with communication. So if someone's wondering, what's my purpose? We can have a look into their archangelic realm of training or which chakra their soul most close, closely aligns with to have a look at the natural skills, traits and things that they bring to the world sort of effortlessly. So it, it's kind of a nice way of seeing what your purpose is without, you know, I, I suppose realizing that your purpose is more than I have this job or I do that over there at this time. It's you, you know, what's the energy that you bring? How do people feel when they're around you? And what are your natural talents? So it's really nice um, to check in in that way if you're feeling a bit lost as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And also just making sure that you feel, because you could feel it within. And I feel like it also then helps to reinforce that you actually are going in the right direction, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think when, for many that are listening, a lot of our listeners might resonate with going through an awakening and Mm -hmm. really shedding a lot of skin of the past. And then when you're in this new sort of, you know, that phoenix rising from the ashes and you're really, you, you almost have this, massive like canvas brand new canvas to paint this brand new picture almost mm-hmm. you're like well, where do I start with the paint yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I think it's it's great it, it it can help really reinforce that and I, I guess in terms of other insight Amelia where else would you say you know some of the valuable insight comes from the Akashic Records and how it can help us in our soul's journey mm. Um, well, we can find out, like I said, if, if, you know, if you're, um, an earth soul. So if you were born, your soul was first sort of incarnated on earth, or if you're a star seed. And I find that 99% of the people who I read for personally are star seed, star travelers. Um, to me, I suppose that sort of makes sense because if you're, if earth isn't actually your, your home planet, your place of origination, you might always have this feeling that there's something else or that you're not 100% at home here. So, you know, you go seeking for these things and for answers. Um, so it can help in that way if you've always felt that you sort of see things a bit differently or you one you know you stand back and you look at how we behave how humans behave and you question it sometimes you can find your answers there because actually your soul does see things in a different way we can also look into past lives um so if there's a particular blockage you're wanting to work through we can have a look in the akashic records to see if there's anything that comes up there you know that that's helpful with you or for you now in terms of working through and releasing and moving forward I mean really anything anything you're wondering you you really should be able to find it in the Akashic Records because it's all there um one thing I will say though is it's not always readily available because your higher self can be a bit sneaky is what I found and (laughs) mm, Oh, it's almost like a tough love approach sometimes. And and so sometimes if you're wanting to know something, it might be withheld from you if it's not going to serve you in the long run, you know, if it's not the best time. Oh. Um, so, yeah. So sometimes, you know, you might check in on something and you'll get the message. Yep. Green light, go ahead. And you do it and you think, well, that was awful, but I checked it in my Akashic records and I, you know, it seemed like it was going to be a good thing, but actually your higher self was saying, but we needed you to learn that particular lesson, you know? So we told you it would be good, even though it hasn't worked out in the way that you consider to be good. So it's all there, but sometimes, um, I don't know, you know, it's a bit, a bit, you have to be careful because your, um, your guide, your higher self can be a bit sneaky. <laughs> yeah. And I do, I, I get that because I think sometimes, you know, you, 
with our higher selves, with spirit, that sometimes you just don't need to know because you don't need to know. And um, yeah, it's all about having the right, having the added insight to help move forward and mm-hmm. and become more aligned with your soul. So it makes sense. Like, why would you? Yeah, you know, it's like what you don't know won't harm you in a sense because if it is harmful or if it's troubling, why would you want to know that? You'd only really want to know the positives. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and then you would never go down that path but you'd never you know have the chance to learn whatever it was or wrap something up um yeah. so yeah it's interesting because you you mentioned the soul um the soul group of origin right mm. and before I did my Akashic records with you I mean I'm going back 10 years and I remember saying and because I like to travel the world and stuff I kept thinking that it's because maybe I'm not meant to be in you know a certain country and mm-hmm. that, oh maybe I I don't know why I'm here I think I need to move and I didn't that's how I was sort of seeing it and I did sometimes feel like I saw things a bit differently and yeah. what I found interesting is that when I found out what my soul group was it showed that I was a star seed and I was yeah. like oh my goodness <laughs> I'm not even from earth but I was mm-hmm. so excited and I think I then embraced it and it helped me so I think oh. for those that are listening mm. if you do feel like you stick out and it's you always feel like you're the odd one out or you've not really felt at home definitely it can help you clarify or confirm and then I think that confirmation can be really empowering because mm-hmm. I was like okay so I'm from this I think it's it, um, what mine said was Procyon, if I've said that right. Um, pro- Procyon? Procyon. Oh, there you mm-hmm. go. See, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to, to know um, how to pronounce it. And part was from there and then also Mission Realm. Um, yes. Yeah, that was, that did influence your soul. Yeah. And so that was interesting because I know you said earlier that there's not as much information yet on some soul groups and Mm -hmm. I that was what was coming out with mission realm is that there's still more to be known and still more to be known about both groups which I found interesting and then it made I I sort of felt that maybe that makes a lot of sense because if they're if if it's a newly formed or a a more newer soul group then you'd may feel even more outnumbered (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. because you're you're not maybe good you know what's the chances that you're going to meet okay the chances you're going to meet another star seed can be relatively high if you know yeah and normally they do attract one another yeah and I think right now a lot of the listeners probably a lot of them are in many mm-hmm. ways and um, those that are in my life right now I definitely think they are and that those that know me and are close to me are probably laughing going yes I just need to know what soul group I'm in <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah but it's so interesting because I still feel like there's so much yet to know and mm. I think one is it the mission realmers or something else that came out in my oh it came out in in another part of uh, my of my akashic records reading it it was around i think it was around soul group not the soul group but the the um significant trainings or oh yes uh, yeah yeah and and that was interesting because when you said like when you mentioned the point about not knowing you know certain things when I first read that, so I, it showed me three different lessons in my lifetime and they weren't so, you know, lessons are not always nice lessons, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so mine didn't really say the nicest of things, let's say, you know, I think one of them, I was, I was a man, <laughs> I was a husband and uh, it was like ignorance is bliss and I was being cheated on, but maybe I was just being ignorant and I knew it and I had to go mm. through that lesson. And that yeah. I could see it, when I read that, I was like, wow, that must have been quite painful and quite a, mm-hmm. big, a wound to really overcome and to heal. But obviously it was said in my reading that that was a, a significant area of my soul's growth. Yeah, yeah. So that was actually quite cool because it was like, well, you, you went through that, Steph? Whew, you know, that, that, that's not that's not so that's not so easy um yeah I've gone through and then you know there was one about a grandmother and absence makes the heart grow fonder and this really this really did make me 
like a little bit well up a bit because it was around a grandmother that didn't get to see her grandchildren. And I that, remember, yes, I felt the same when I channeled this. It was so sad. Do you know what's weird? And I'm going to share this because I really, I really believe in being open and I'm not afraid to be open. My mother's passed, bless her soul, but she's very much in my energy. So she's here right now with us. Um, mm-hmm. But my mom had, bef- she had this experience she really yeah she wasn't writing letters but unfortunately she didn't get to see all of her grandchildren for several years before passing and this really made me cry a lot I used to get so emotional over Mm. it even now just saying it it just um and I used to sit there and there was moments where you know on a weekend you would because there was times where my mum was so involved I mean she was front line and center as a grandma you know Mm -hmm. uh, as a nana or whatever um we'd call her and um she was there for some you know the first grandchild um I don't have children so it was with my siblings kids mm-hmm. and she was really a significant role and a positive role in in the first grandchild and then there was challenges afterwards the other grandchildren that came were from different in, you know, different situations and that those situations weren't probably as let's say accessible and maybe mm-hmm. I'd say they weren't fair enough on someone you know in in my mum's position and yeah. there was times on weekends where I just used to see her look so lonely Mm. and when I think about this I think that there was a reason why I saw that and I kind of relived it with her yes definitely Mm. it's it sort of almost sounds like you saw it witnessed it and felt it and understood (sighs) it in a different way to your siblings yeah and it's And it's and it was really hard because it did create a bit of a resentment towards one of my siblings because I was Mm. like, she never saw these grandkids and then she passed. Mm. And I thought, how? But, you know, that's their own journey and that's their own journey to understand what they were, why they did what they did and made those decisions they made Mm -hmm. to to create that distance because it was their choice. You know, my mum. Always, she was a. She actually looked after. She did a lot of childcare, um, mm-hmm. in, in, in the sort of later part of her, like the second part of her sort of working life. She did a lot okay. of childcare because she wanted to be a at home mum with us. And mm-hmm. one of my siblings was just a bit too demanding. He didn't want to. He 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 needed his mum there. He was a bit more demanding. So so my mum sort of changed career because of that, and she was great with children. So that really yeah that really hit home hard and it's interesting because you know that was one of my greatest growths right and yeah one thing that I learned off the back of that is after my mum passed I realized that um one of and it's connecting it's connecting so much because I have um one of my other other arcane angelic trainings is with Mm -hmm. archangel Uriel Mm-hmm. And and it says that these souls are very caring. And this was beautiful. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I did think I was one of those, you know, caring, loving, nurturing. They make really good family members, you know, partners, mm-hmm. friends. And I thought, oh, that's beautiful. Well, that just reassures me that, you know, I am very dearly, you know, um, considered and embraced by those mm. that are close to me. But one of the challenges that that could come with is boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the boundaries is interesting because it's definitely been part of a lot of my healing journey and my transformation. And when I think about this life lesson, this soul lesson of the grandmother, Mm -hmm. um, after my mother passed, I, the nurturing, loving person that I was, I was so sort of like, I kind of embodied my mother's energy after she went. I was the only female left. And, you know, the family was sort of flocking to me and looking to me for everything. And I was just being there nurturing everyone else but myself. Mm, Yeah. And I then, and then also a part of me realized, wait a minute, I'm doing this and I'm not setting boundaries. But also there's a part of me that there was moments where it was like, my nephews or you know the kids were around me and then they were being pulled from me and that part of my soul and I didn't realize at the time so now I can tell you in hindsight I think my soul was going no no you've seen and I that what I said to myself at the time is I am not reliving what mum lived relived lived 
I wow, yeah. I am going to break the cycle. Mm-hmm. I am not going to go through what she went through because she yep. really it from a point of suffering, right? Because mm-hmm. I saw her suffer. So I decided to set certain boundaries, and those boundaries basically meant that I would, you know, by by doing those by doing those boundaries, putting them in place, it would mean that I was at risk of seeing certain individuals in my family. And I, that did happen. And I'm really at peace with it though. Mm -hmm. And I am at peace with it now, even though it does feel like, you know, oh, why couldn't things be better? I also know for the goodness of my like own well-being is that when I was trying to be in those situations, I was really drained and I'd always yeah. come out of them feeling really like I'd feel tired, exhausted. I felt like I gave all of my effort yeah. and I wasn't getting anything in return or it was being dangled on a string when it suited other people. And I just thought, no, I need to, I need to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. Yeah. I had to just share that with you because, um, I just think it's phenomenal how that was one of my souls, like one of my biggest growth. Yeah, definitely. That's so interesting to, to hear because, you know, we, we hear about sort of um, ancestral wounds that we carry um, and experiences that are passed down through generations. So, you know, we're kind of from your, what you've said, we're seeing that play out and how you managed, you know, as you also said to kind of end that cycle. So that's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that, that I had to share and I had to share with everyone, but it kind of makes me feel quite like exhilarated by it. Like I feel, I feel empowered by knowing that and yeah. going, oh, actually I wasn't a nasty, mean auntie at the time. You <laughs> yeah. know, I was doing, and I, I wasn't being dramatic. Yeah, I wasn't. And I do have, mm. you know, relationships, with certain, certain, you know, um, you know, nieces, nephews, but it's not, maybe not all of them, but I had to do yeah. what I had to do. And I don't mm-hmm. regret it to this day. And, and now this actually aligns to it. Another one that I just wanted to call out was, so there's an area in the Akashic records about the most significant trainings. Yes. This is so cool because, and now this is one that I have to say, (laughs) I got the third order. Yeah. And it didn't really make that much sense to me last year because it said, you know, it's, it's working with guardian angels to meet souls upon death of their physical bodies Mm -hmm. and to guide them to their designated place. But I, not that I'm saying I wasn't connected to the angels and, and the archangels and, but now where I'm at right now, I really feel like I'm connected to the angels a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I've started to read tarot, as you know, I've told you about yeah. that. And I feel like I get a lot of like guidance and, and messages and they're mm-hmm. just, just so incredible. So this makes a lot of sense. And the other thing that makes a lot of sense with this about passing, you know, to the next life and the death, mm-hmm. it's said in the reading um, that they're not afraid, like, this training often makes good mediums and they're not really afraid of death. And I'm not like, I've been, I've been coming to, yeah, I've been coming to grips lately. Well, you know, recently I was like, I actually don't see death as death. I see it as a rebirth. And it's so funny because I've come back to this and I've gone, wait a second. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So interesting. And then there's the other point of, um, you know, that it says in the third order about souls settling in physical bodies and it can be quite yes. traumatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I've, I've not, I don't know if you know more about that, Amelia. I believe. Okay. So I think it's the, um, it's the first three months, if I'm correct, of a baby's life. It's very traumatic for the soul because, um, on earth, we're very confined by our physical bodies and energy just moves much more slowly. So it's the soul adjusting to being in this physical body. It's kind of an uncomfortable process. And souls who have training in the third order actually help, you know, when when they're not incarnated, when they're in spirit form, they help these newly incarnated souls um, to acclimatize basically and to get settled. So, um, you know, your training, it's great for helping people to come out of their physical bodies and also to get settled in a new physical body um, as well. So, yeah, I mean, does that, is there, does that sort of help (laughs) yeah no it does it's really interesting because I think um 
yeah, I just didn't, I just, yeah, it's just, I didn't really resonate with it as much last year. And again, yes. now, and we, I've recorded an episode, which obviously is in this series and it's about the womb. It's about uh, y- Yoni and about yeah. women embracing their, that's the center of their universe. It's of where life c- comes from. And so that it's just, it's so interesting because mm. we're talking about those topics and how to really holistically heal and okay. create, create a very healthy, um, nurturing, safe environment for a baby to grow mm-hmm. as a fetus. So it's yes. so interesting that I'm talking about these subjects as well. It is. And actually, you know, souls with, with training in the third order actually begin this process of helping the soul to acclimatize while the baby is in the womb. So that's that's really interesting. Wow. And it really links with um, you were talking about, you know, your connection to the root chakra and Archangel Uriel and being this nurturer, you know, so we can see how your soul training really plays out in a very 3D way with you being this this nurturer, this giver and the person who's bringing the family together you know, helping people, I suppose, to acclimatize to new situations, whether it's maybe the loss of a family member or perhaps, actually, it's interesting. Did you find that when, you know, you, when new babies were born in your family, were you kind of a key player? And, um, you know, were you, were you sort of around a lot? Were you quite involved? Yeah, I was mm-hmm. when, when, yeah, I was, I, obviously you get excited, right? Everyone wants yeah. to be involved, mm-hmm. but I definitely was, and I was definitely the auntie that, gave the most presents the most (laughs) literally spoil and you know my nephews if they liked Buzz Lightyear they had every single merchandise yeah (laughs) you know it was like I kitted them out and it was like my pride and joy to do that and and also with friends kids and things Mm -hmm. like that that I was close to yeah um, I'd want to spend a lot of time yeah yeah definitely that makes sense and I, and I am quite drawn to kids as well, just on a general level. I think that they gravitate to me. They say, though, right, Amelia, that when you're, qu- you're very much in a good vibration and, mm-hmm. you, you know, you're in a quite positive vibration, you would, you you attract a lot of, you know, animals and, and, and kids. Yeah, so, yeah. So that could be also the crossover, but... Um, Definitely. And, and then there was this area around the explorer soul. And I think that this is yeah. so cool. So the explorer souls are adventurers among souls mm-hmm. who like to discover uncharted territory. And I feel like, because I'm a life path number seven as well, I feel like I'm one of those people that almost keeps going to another place that they don't know where they're going. It's I literally pulled a tarot uh, oracle card from a deck recently and a few times it keeps coming out and it was seven mm. and it goes unknown but it actually mm. oh you're going into another unknown and I just laughed because I said I just keep going to unknowns but I get <laughs> and I, I feel and, and this said you know souls with this training they have that interest with doing, yep. you know, going into uncharted territory but with the view to like learn and then share maybe and and, and and share back and gather information for, for others as well. Yeah. And then obviously that links back with your ability to communicate and your desire to communicate. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's just, it's such an incredible because I'm like, wow, because I, I never really, because I'm, you know, when you think you can see yourself in so many different lights, I could see myself as quite a fixed energy because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I'm a certain star sign or a zodiac, right? You know, but, yeah. But I've always been quite a free spirit. So this explorer mm-hmm. soul makes sense because I've always felt like I've always wanted to go where others haven't been before. Or okay. Do yeah. So, yeah. And then it said souls with this training also have a particular interest in seeing earth restored to its original blueprint Yeah, and seeing far less negativity. And I, I tell you what, Amelia, I like what's going on in the world today and the way things are evolving I really just, I'm really trying my best to, you know, go, no, like we need Mm -hmm. to come together and we need to, you know, fight against um, negativity with positivity, right? And and create this, you know, united effect for humanity. So it it really links again. Mm -hmm. I actually, I have felt that from you, you know, whenever you've written to me and said, oh, I've been doing this or I've been here, it's almost like, you're kind of in this 
bubble of positivity that feels separate from everything that's going on. And it's not in a way that you're um, deliberately, you know, trying to block things out and just, and to be ignorant of what's going on, because obviously, you know, you're very aware, but it's just like, whatever's happening in the world, there's always this happy positivity around you where I don't know when we speak I just I think yeah there are good things happening there are reasons to you know to celebrate or to want to travel or to do something you know fun it just I I feel it just sort of radiates from you even through an email oh wow that is beautiful thank you (laughs) well um I'll keep with the I'll keep with it because that's something you know if it's not broken don't fix it (laughs) (laughs) yeah And yeah, so I, I actually, I saw that um, I had a secondary God spark and I thought that this was really like fascinating. Could you talk a bit about the God spark, um, Amelia, and what that means to begin with? Yeah. So everybody has one. Um, It connects from our heart chakra up to source. Like you can imagine it as a cord. Um, and it's when we go to sleep, it's, it's how we recharge, you know, our, um, sort of how our soul recharges, I guess. And I've heard it said that it, um, this cord connects us to source energy for two minutes. I've also read it's three minutes. So two or three minutes, um, every night is enough to keep us connected to the divine realm. And my personal theory is that it happens at night because that's when our ego mind, our conscious mind, is resting, you know, so it's not in the way, it's not creating chaos or blockages, it's not resisting this, um, this, this flow of energy. So everyone has one of those and some souls will have a second one. This normally happens if you've gone through something particularly significant or maybe challenging and you have a purpose connected to that coming up. So um, let's stick with communication. So let's say that as a child, someone is never heard. They're always told to be quiet. They um, So they get a blockage in their throat chakra and that, you know, that's a problem throughout their life. At some point, they may get this secondary God spark. So not only do they have the cord attached attached to source from their heart they have it at their throat chakra as well so it's an extra boost of energy at the throat and everything associated with it like communication and authenticity Um, and this can be because in you know however many months or years to come this person is actually going to find that they become some kind of public speaker or some kind of leader um, or a teacher you know unbeknownst to them at the time but essentially a god spark is our direct connection with source energy um and i just think without that we'd become so ungrounded and most people obviously aren't aware of it don't know that it's happening every night but you you know you don't need to know it's happening that doesn't make it any less effective yeah yeah okay that's interesting so when i saw this i was like whoa i've been given two superpowers <laughs> <laughs> yes That's yeah what I kind of thought but then I thought okay how does how do you how do you determine that and then I think it said that my second god spark is connected to my heart chakra so mm-hmm. would that mean that maybe my heart chakra do you think that I had a lot of challenges and prior to that being gifted as a secondary god spark that maybe my heart chakra had been you know I had been broken hearted a lot or clo- you know my heart chakra was closed what would you say yeah I mean it could have been those things it could also be that you're you're a very big hearted person and people would be drawing on that energy from you so oh. you know spirit decided okay we're going to give you extra sort of um, replenishment in that area so you don't become depleted and in a sense what you're doing now with this podcast connecting with so many people and sharing all these um you know, trying to to share really helpful and interesting messages. That's sort of coming from the heart chakra as well, because it's coming from a place of of care. Um, so it could be that as well. Now that makes a lot of sense. And remember, we saw that I'm with the archangel Uriel, where there's mm-hmm. a lot of nurturing energy and giving, and you need to set boundaries. Yes, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, I've got maybe two hearts or a really big one, but <laughs> a really, really big one. Yeah, a really big one. But I'm going to manage it effectively with some good boundaries. <laughs> and it showed, and it was so interesting that you were able to see how long I've had it for. Yes. Yeah. So I found that out by using my pendulum and essentially um, just asking, you know, have you had this for 
10 years or more. If it was a yes, okay, 11 years or more. And really narrowing it down in that way to try and pinpoint maybe um, a particular event that you could maybe remember or something that happened or something you thought at the time, you know, so you can say, oh yeah, I went through that particular thing. So that's when I got this sort of extra boost of of energy um, and nourishment. And for some people, they can think back and very clearly say, my goodness, that was the day or the night when, you know, X, Y, Z for other people, it's obviously not so um, clear. But yeah, I I like to try and sort of pinpoint a a roundabout, you know, when it would have happened to give people some idea. Oh, wow. I've, something's just hit me. Hmm. Okay. So this is just coming through right now. (laughs) Okay. Last year was 2020. And you said, you said to me it was 12 years and six months. Yeah. So 12 years, if you took go back would have been 2008 and then six months. So maybe 2007, mid 2007. Mm -hmm. In 2007, I started a community cultural platform that was to connect Go and Portuguese people in the area of London. I started doing events. (laughs) I was bringing people from Wow. And I did it for about 12 years. I mean, I've kind of, that is where I've transitioned and stopped doing that. And I've done the podcast, but I was, so the secondary God spark being the heart chakra, I was giving, I basically, Mm -hmm. this was not, this is crazy. So this is not, (laughs) Wow, this was not me profiting, right? This was a yep, non, like yep. this was a, a non-profit uh, organization, mm-hmm. and it, the aim was to bring people together to let them connect with the fact that you know we're from this going Portuguese community because it's very different. And I grew up feeling I already grew up feeling different, but I grew up feeling like mm-hmm. I couldn't resonate with other kind of Asian groups because we were mixed and, mm-hmm. but it, you know, with colonization type um, influences and feeling like we're from sort of different um, cultural groups and, mm. and just everything with it. And there wasn't many um, young people with that background. So growing okay. up, I kind of wanted, that was the point that I then brought it together and I brought it together with music and live, um, live, live sort of um, music events wow. and, and food. And then we were doing it, we were part of a festival which was part of a massive festival with like 10 to 20,000 people and and in yes. these events yeah in these events I'd give away a lot of free food mm-hmm. um, we would make losses because it was never well not always make losses but we tried to break even to cover the cost but many yeah. times it was coming out of my own pocket or my own time and energy and Sometimes I think, how did I pull all of that off? Because I did have a team, but there was times where, you know, I was really driving the ship. Yeah. Sailing yeah. the ship. <laughs> so, yeah, that is incredible. Yeah. And you see, there you are being at like the, the center of this community and being a giver and a nurturer. And that's the thing, because you could have done that and you could be doing this podcast from a very egocentric way. You know, I want to talk and I want people to listen to me, but it, it's nothing like that. It's really coming from the heart space. And I think that everyone, you know, can feel that. So it makes so much sense, actually. That's incredible. That's so cool that we've been able to sort of honor I know, that one. <laughs> right here, right now. <laughs> yeah, there's like live, live, yeah. um, live signals coming through. <laughs> uh, and the other area that I thought was quite cool is that you're able to understand what your strongest intuitive gift is. Yes, yeah. And I, I guess I'm still trying to understand this one because my one was said to be clairaudience. Yeah. And um, so that's obviously the ability to receive intuitive guidance through hearing. Yeah. And but it can be your own voice, right? It doesn't have yes. to be like a. So maybe that's what it is. Because I. So this is quite funny. I'm not hearing. I'm not going crazy. But, you know, we have the voice in our head. I don't really. Hear, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really hear a stranger's voice let's say let's call it a stranger okay. because if it's me it's me it's Steph so I'm yep. not hearing a step a voice that's not Steph but yeah the voice I hear is always Steph but there are times where I'm definitely thinking or feeling that Steph is telling Steph certain yes things that she needs yeah. to do and I do sometimes think is this me in my head overthinking but I am very mm-hmm. kind of I, I do try to practice a lot of mindfulness and try to be which I think I'm quite good at being at times um but you know, we all get in our head. So yeah. Could that be then the the voice in my head actually can be part my clairaudience messages coming from from my higher self? 
Experience. Yeah, yeah. I would say actually that's probably mostly how you would pick up on these clairaudient messages. I think it's very, very rare to, to hear like a disembodied voice that's completely different um, from your own. Most of it is your own. It sounds like your own voice in your own head. So I think that's why it's really crucial, actually, if one of your abilities is clairaudience to really be able to quiet your mind in whichever way works for you. So you can feel which voice is that of your higher self, you know, which is in alignment with your soul versus your ego, just sort of firing off lots of, um, you know, messages here and there. Yeah. But uh, I mean, for me, I've only ever heard probably like three clairaudient messages in my life that have been from something outside, you know, a voice outside of myself. And it's normally when it's because of something very urgent. You know, it's like my guide spirit is saying there's no time for you to be questioning which is which we need you to know. You know, we need you to pay attention right now. Oh, wow. um, but otherwise, I think it's just the voice yeah, in your head, which obviously always sounds crazy, but... <laughs> So, not in actually, that sense that's interesting so when you read tarot because obviously mm. I watch you a lot you know sometimes you'll be reading and obviously you're reading the energy and going intuitively but then you'll say oh I've just got this message from spirit so is that when you say that is that actually your voice and your your understanding that it's a part of you that's connected to spirit saying that to you yes yeah it, it oh. just sounds like me in my head um <laughs> just having oh, a wow. thought but it's so random and I've come to trust over time that it's random because it's not me you know there would be times early on where I would have a um let's say I'm doing a reading about um, I don't know a relationship and suddenly I, I hear something in my head which sounds just like me thinking about a message about someone's house now right at the start I may have disregarded that because I would think maybe my mind is wondering you know going off in another direction and then I'd keep going and I'd pull messages in tarot that clearly were about a house so over time I started to realize hold on this isn't obviously you know just me thinking weird things um so yeah, it, it just sounds like me talking to myself in my head. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay, okay, that's really cool. Okay, that's really cool. And um, actually, and I'm going to sort of put you on the spot, but you know, t- share what you want to. But did you do your own Akashic records for yourself, or did you get someone to facilitate it? Like, what was yeah. that like? Well, I actually haven't. So as I mentioned, I first learned them through a course um, written by Anasayas. So when I started working with her, she actually asked me, is it okay if I look into your Akashic records, I guess, maybe to see if we'd work well together. Um, So she kind of did a mini version for me. This was so many years ago now. So I kind of remember bits and pieces of it. Um, I haven't looked into it myself, which might sound weird, but I don't know. I... I don't know I just haven't maybe I kind of got everything I felt I needed at the time maybe I'm worried that I might go into it and and do it in a biased way or something like that Mm, but um, I haven't actually read for myself no yeah I get that I think I think if I was to want to get more from it I'm not sure if I yeah I, I get that I'm not sure if I feel like I could I know that we can yeah, a lot of people to, do. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you just have to go with your feeling. Of yes. Do you yeah. want it? And that kind of comes to that point of like, when is it the right time, really? Do you have, to, you know, I don't think, that, would you agree? I don't think there's a specifically right time. It's just sometimes things come up in your journey and you might go, I feel like I need to go there now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the right time is whenever you're feeling um, guided. Yeah, because, you know, I remember getting readings from you and I saw it as something that you did. And I looked at it and I went, no, <laughs> like <laughs> not not in like a rude way. I was like, no, I just want this relationship one. Right. And yes, then all yeah. I was interested at the time. But then I'd really gone on a journey. And afterwards, I was like, wait a minute. Let me just look at this this whole thing about Akashic Records. And that's when I said, and so that resonated. And today there might be, you know, those that are listening that are going, I've never heard of this before. And then they mm-hmm. really like explore the topic and listen to this and they go, I feel it's my moment. So for any of you guys listening, if you feel it's your moment or it's time to look into it, go ahead, take this as a, yeah. as the opportunity to, to go, to go there. Mm. Well, I think that was really, that was a really great conversation. I think it was even better because I think in order to talk about this, it's really good to be able to like share firsthand somebody yep. insight 
And yeah. And I mean, I, I feel like today talking, we really sort of worked through and pieced together even more, especially from your reading. And, and we got to see how some of, you know, these things that maybe sound a bit out there are actually playing out for you. So that was, that was really nice actually to, to witness and be a part of. Well, number one, know that you actually did a fantastic Akashic Record reading. Your oh, gifts, thank you. <laughs> are, your gifts are definitely, um, you know, aligned in the right place, and you're doing. You've been doing some of the the, the greatest work you could do on Earth to help uh, souls. So I'm really glad that I'm able to actually share this not only just like, you know, on an episode, but with you. And it's quite, it's quite an intimate thing, but we're doing it together, like quite kind of publicly. But I think it's a beautiful kind of opportunity to be able to do that. Yeah, well, thanks, Steph. I definitely feel the same. And I couldn't have thought of anyone better to have done it for me. It just, it's so funny when you look back in in hindsight and I'm like, wow, I can't believe it. Like who would have thought when I asked for an Akashic Record reading that I'd be talking about it. I know, right? (laughs) Yeah. So it's, it's very magical. But with that being said, Amelia, I have to thank you yet again for being here. And you know that I probably, I'm trying to think of already another reason why I could get you back on again. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'd love to come back. (laughs) Well, I think our listeners love you and um, I know you've got your own lovely community which I I feel mm-hmm. like I'm a part of so oh yeah um, for sure yeah and um, I'm it's, it's just it's always it's always something that it's actually it was some your community was something that really helped my soul when I felt very alone and to be able to resonate with other souls in your community and with you and just your mm. energy has has been wonders to my life so Oh, well, that, that really means everything because yeah, that was my intention when, you know, I started my channel and, and tried to sort of bring people together. So yeah, that's really lovely. And for those guys that are interested in Amelia's channel on YouTube, it's Dr. Amelia Caddy, PhD on YouTube. And she does regular readings Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, and sometimes some really cool bonus readings. And (laughs) she does these votes so you can get involved and like, and I love it. And um, recently she did a live um, I think you did a live premiere. We were all yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it was. And I was I've never really interacted with people live, and okay. we, we were having some funny jokes as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were. Because what happens is I, I do the readings. I'm sitting here by myself. I put it out there, and then I go back and see all the comments. But in a sense, it can be a bit lonely. You know, I put it out there, and then I step back. So it was nice to be really involved with all of you while you were watching the reading as well. So it's nice for me too. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I'd love if you did it again. And I know that it, you can't always do it because it's quite, mm-hmm. you know, you've got to be there and you have to be hands on. But I think there were so many people on as well. I was like, wow, this is incredible. Look at <laughs> this community. It's growing and it's got really a good, a good, vibrant energy to it and um, a lot of love. So, yeah. That was fun. Yeah. That was good fun. So with that being said, I will definitely be tuning into your videos and be in touch, I'm sure, uh, for another excuse to try and get you on to a podcast episode. <laughs> but thank you again, Amelia. Thank you, Steph. Guys, thank you for listening to this episode. Um, and to end on a quote, as we always do, the Akashic Records offer a process to connect with the divine knowing of your soul in this moment.